It's December 23rd, and Shadow and I have come to one of my favorite places on Earth to do astrophotography tonight. We're gonna to be camping. There's my little setup. This is just a spectacular spot on Earth. I mean, I, I hope the camera can capture just some of the beauty of it. And one of the other really cool things about this spot is there are petroglyphs. Anasazi petroglyphs. I'm going to show you some. These particular ones may not show what I'm going to describe to you very well, but often the humanoid figures have antennas, great big antennas. I mean, lots of the petroglyphs show the humanoid figures with kind of little short legs, great big long arms, and antennas. And we don't know what these petroglyphs mean. However, uh, one can speculate that perhaps they were influenced by uh, alien life forms or something. There's one petroglyph in one area that I saw that I swear Steven Spielberg could have patterned E.T. after. Big broad head with eyes as alien looking as you can imagine. I've got to climb over this, so I'm going to set the camera down right here for a moment. And just set it right there, because I need hands and feet. And even then, I'm hoping I don't fall. Oh, I did it. Yay! I did it. Okay. Let's see if we can show you some of these petroglyphs. So here's a, a human, little legs, arms, and another one here with little funny looking legs. And then here's kind of like a, a donkey with a long tail and horns. These animals have horns, so maybe not a donkey, obviously. Uh, more like, you know, the horns go back, I don't know. They're not deer horns. They look more like maybe some kind of a mountain goat or something like that. Here, here's another animal. Here's another one here. And one there. I wish we had sort of a Rosetta Stone of sorts that could help us interpret what the Anasazi and the Fremont Indians were uh, communicating on these walls. They were clearly not just doing it for fun. They were communicating. These things mean something. But we don't know. That uh, language is long lost. And we just don't know. It's a mystery. While climbing down, I discovered another group of petroglyphs. Or did you find them first, Shadow? Maybe you found them first. I'm right, literally balancing on an edge. See all these little dots making up this pattern? And, you know, it's worn off over the hundreds and hundreds of years enough to where I'm not sure what it originally was. What do you want there, little buddy? Now, you often see these rainbow type things. You see those a lot. Would love to know what they mean. Usually they have people in them. So tonight we are going to be reaching up into the cosmos and right next to us are pictographs, or I'm sorry, petroglyphs from an ancient civilization. And maybe they knew some things we didn't know. And maybe we're doing a connection of sorts from the past, you know, into the future kind of interesting to think about. I wish I had a time machine. That is a cactus you don't want to step on. And the targets I'm going to go after tonight will depend on uh, a number of conditions. I have several in mind. I've got the Christmas tree in mind um, with the cone. I've got uh, the horse head in mind. I've got uh, Casper Nebula. Uh, in the Orion constellation. When it gets dark here, it gets dark fast. So I'm going to set up now while I have daylight. I'm going to keep the scope down low so that the wind doesn't bother me too much, hopefully. And where I'm camped right here in this little enclave, I think it's going to help a lot. If there is any wind, there is no wind right now. I just remembered I forgot my 
shroud, but I don't need it. But I like it. Okay, we are basically set up. I'll wait to put the camera in, but I'm ready to pretty much go as soon as it gets dark. So I just talked to the nice ranger and she's gonna open up the uh, recycling dumpster and I'm gonna take a look and see if there's any cardboard or something. I have tape that I could just kind of make a circular um, shroud out of. Uh, it'll work just fine if I uh, can find something because the Maxitoff Newtonian telescope has a lens right at the front of the telescope. So it's more susceptible than a regular Newtonian telescope that only has a mirror in the back. Shadow, come on! You know, to um, any light coming in from the sides, perhaps a car or just a, a light or something. There's not going to be much out here. I just like having one though. She opened the recycling dumpster and I found this box that's getting kind of dark in the inside of this uh, kind of enclave. So I don't know how well you can see the beauty. I'm going to try to hold the camera down a little bit so that the aperture adjusts. Shadow is wrapping all around me. So the aperture um, adjusts for the lower light conditions and maybe you can see these beautiful, beautiful formations from the wind, mostly the wind here. And they carve out these beautiful little arches and things. Shadow, stay up here, buddy. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Stay up here. In that direction, on the other side of all those cliffs, is St. George. So I usually don't shoot in that direction. You ever heard the saying, necessity is the mother of invention? Found a box, in the garbage can, a little bit of duct tape. I highly recommend that everybody carry some duct tape on them. Put it in the in the glove compartment of your car, your truck, or, or whatever. Duct tape, it can save your life. It can be used for so many things. I always have some duct tape on me. And it came in handy. That'll work just fine. Okay, we just need to wait now for it to get dark. And it won't take long, so I'm gonna go into the tent and get the little fire going in there. Let me show you my abode for tonight. While I'm letting the rig do its thing, I will be snuggled up and sleeping soundly on my cot. It's toasty warm in here because of the Winterwell camp stove. It's got a little fire going on in there. All right, we're gonna go Polar Line and Star Line. Well, Shadow and I are heading back and then uh, then I'm gonna process these uh, images and I'll share them with you. 